nickname is Wang Minghui, and I'm a senior at UC Berkeley. The best birthday present that I've ever received is a letter that my father wrote to me from a Chinese labor camp. My parents practiced Falun Gong, a meditation practice rooted in the Buddhist tradition. It was immensely popular in China. But when it outnumbered the Chinese Communist Party membership, the CCP launched a brutal persecution to eradicate Falun Gong in 1999, the year before I was born. My parents were arrested many times and tortured for their faith. When I was five years old, the CCP purposely showed my mother suffering in front of me to further attempt to break her spirit. I remember she was cuffed to a chair with a very thick plastic tube inserted into her nose and several people were right next to her guarding her. She was in the process of being force-fed liquids that had an unbearable smell. She was clearly in excruciating pain and I was terrified and crying. I could not believe this was the person I've dreamed so many times about. Is this the person I should call Mama? Soon after my mother's release, my father was kidnapped again by the CCP in 2007. The police told us it is impossible for us to see him unless he gives up the practice. Since I could not see my father, I started writing to him. We could not talk about sensitive topics because all our letters are closely monitored. So I would tell him about getting very good grades in school, attending swimming lessons, eating lots of snacks, and all the just little moments in life. Even though he was living and fighting in the darkness, his letters were filled with so much light. They were the most thoughtful, encouraging pieces of advice and even brought humor to brighten up my days. One year, just before my birthday, he wrote a jingle poem that incorporated all the joyful little moments that I had included in the letters. And that was the best birthday present I've ever received. Many years later, when I reread those letters, I realized he never talked about his sufferings with me. He always sounded so uplifting and told us not to worry about him. He even apologized in multiple his letters for not writing back to me soon enough because it was inconvenient. I did not think too much of it back then, but when I grew older and learned what had happened to him, my heart breaks every time I think about what those inconveniences could have been. Was it the daily 16 consecutive hours of forced labor? Was it day after day of being tied up to a chair without being allowed to move? Was it getting tortured excessively by the high voltage electric baton? Or was it worse than I can imagine? I cannot bear to think too much into it, but his scars say it all. We're just an ordinary family. We just wanted a place to freely practice Falun Gong and freely live by the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. And yet we had to risk everything. Millions of Falun Gong practitioners in China also share the same hope for their future, but it has not yet come true. Many of them are, at this very moment that I'm speaking to you, being persecuted inside those dark cells. We left our loved ones, our home, and our community behind in hopes for a better future. I'm incredibly grateful my family is now safe in America, where I can tell you all about our experiences without worrying that I could be killed. But many families like mine are not so lucky. There are two things you can do to help. One, raise awareness and do not stay silent about my story. Awareness is what the Chinese Communist Party fears the most. Two, support the bipartisan bills, Stop Forest Organ Harvesting Act and Falun Gong Protection Act. These can save lives.